Well, it looks like I am have the luck of the draw on Saturday. It's not customer pay. It's warranty, which I hate doing on a Saturday. But... 22S36. Um, these navigators and expeditions that are catching on fire. We got 60 of them we got to do, and there's five of them sitting right here. And I was given the first one of the slew that we got. And I'm going to walk you guys through what I'm doing exactly. Uh, for some reason, I have... Oh, they're disconnected. That's why. Let's go through here and figure out which one it is that we need. I don't know which one of these. And the first one is a... Expedition. 21 Ford Expedition. So... Okay, you're gonna fight me, huh? Let's find out. Let's get it pulled in, let's go through this recall. There's a harness and everything we gotta put in here. Splice, wires in, deep in, yada, yada, yada. 20, yep, 06 of 21 this was built. And the recall is active on this one. See you guys inside. Uh, steps one through five basically says check the fuse box, make sure nothing's broke, make sure none of the clips are broken, make sure everything's there. And then they want you to start taking apart the fuse box to look inside it and make sure that there's nothing melted inside the fuse box. Now we are inside the box. I kind of got it a little bit dirty whenever I was pulling the cover off. Let's just check for fuses being melted. I don't see nothing melted. Nothing toasty and crispy in here. Move forward. The next step, it says remove the battery in the battery tray. So you got 13 millimeter here, 13 millimeter here, here, and here. And then the battery Cables obviously are 10 millimeter hold or uh, these are 10 mil. You just loosen them up, you don't take them out. And then there's an 8 mil for the battery hold down, and then pull your box out. You're gonna have to disconnect your clips and everything from here as you're going around. And then there's a little T20 right here, you gotta pull out Torx 20, the little star thing, guys, for the people that need further explanation. T20. This here is attached to the side of the box as well. It's got a couple of pressure tabs. You gotta be careful with that. And there was a plastic push clip right here that went through the box into this. You gotta pull that out as well. And now they want you to disconnect the connector over here. Push down on the inside and then pull back on the release tab. And then it says once you get the connector off, pull it off to the side. And then they want you to pull this cover off out of the way. And they want you to make note of where each one of these go and disconnect them. These are the basic power feeds for the different circuits and stuff. 10 millimeter, but you gotta make note of where, where they all go. So, Let's see what this one says right here. That one says 125. I don't. I can't read that one. I think that one's 300. That one's another 125. Anyway, disconnect them, label them, do whatever you got to do. You know, the more I look at it, you can't really put them in the wrong place. The perfectly round one goes in the perfectly round slot. This one has a tab off to the side, and that one has a tab off to the side. This one has a double tab on it, slot, and that one is a bigger, wider, fat slot. So, I mean, label them, but they're only going to go back one way easily. If you got to force them, you're putting them in the wrong spot. All right, I got this out. This is the front part of the box that you can easily get to and release these tabs here on the side. But in the back, you got to pull like the two 10 mils out. You got to slip off the... 
you gotta slip the side track off of it that goes along your side over here flip the box kind of upside down and wiggle the connectors and everything else but anyway that's the bottom of it disconnected it's not as clean cut and dry as they make it seem especially with that gray connector right there or that gray zip tie going to that connector that clips into the bottom of the box that they don't say anything about so i got the box disconnected remove the fasteners from the bjb okay pull that tab out of the bottom okay so i release the tab of the lower part of the box Pulled the tray off the side, got did that. Uh, okay, so there is a zip tie. Remove the zip tie, I missed that. Connected in the middle, I didn't really have to remove it. I just flipped the box upside down and disconnected it. Disconnect the connectors, okay. Remove the box from the vehicle, okay, I did. Auxiliary box wiring, assembly installation 17 through 60. It says engine harness, air cleaner assembly, auxiliary box. Uh, remove the air cleaner and follow a workshop manual for that. Okay. And then it says remove the air cleaner. We just read that stuff, which is, there's two quick release tabs here. There's a band clamp here. I just use a flathead harness here. I pull off the box. I disconnect this. I did not need to pull this wire off here. I did it as I got ahead of the 13 millimeter here. And then the box basically just unsnaps from the bottom. I take the cover off first to make it easier. And then I pull up, unsnap it from the bottom. And now we're inside the vehicle at this point. The heck is this? It must be a vent for the four-wheel drive system. Yeah, it's for that new four-wheel drive system. And this is the wire that goes down there and feeds the IWE. The electronic vacuum control, the newer system. Uh, is that the wheel speed sensor or IWE? It could be wheel speed sensor or IW, you know. Anyway, back to what we were doing. All right, now the next step says secure the box to the vehicle over the air box. Over the air box bracket with four zip ties. So let's look down here and see what we got going on. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, let's look and see what, how, all this, how all this goes together. And this is what you're installing. This is how I have the box wired in. I zip tied the back of the bracket to the main harness here and here. And then I zip tied this part of the bracket on the angle to the frame, butted up against it. And went through the eyelid. And then this, I zip tied this harness up to it. The one coming out of the box. I had to go back and cut the electrical connectors from here this way because this wire I had lined up with this connector and it doesn't, you gotta pull it back. You got a little slack on this side over here. And this orange and yellow wire that's in this new harness that they give you, you take the orange and yellow wire out of the driver's side fan Depin it, put that connector and stuff in there, and then wrap the original orange and yellow wire up inside the harness with some cloth tape, real good, and then put the new one in its spot. You got to unlock the face of the connector, and I'll show you how to do that. So, when you're looking at this connector right here in the center, this little piece that I'm moving right here, let's see if I can get. The center little tab once you unlock that and you pry on it this thing unsnaps and then you can just lightly give it a little tug with a pick around the side and that will just pop right out of there and then you can release your center tab on your uh your pin pull it out the back and you're left with a little piece of wire that looks like that and then you clip in your new wire that's in your new harness put your connection back up here you got, you're on your connector side. I put a little zip tie up there just to secure those two wires to each other. I added that. And then uh, 
get up here, line all this up, plug your fan in, and go to the races. Go to the races, baby. There it is. And then I continue with my harness on over, and now I'm working my way back up to the fuse box again. I jumped ahead too far. I should have did this connection before I did the harness. So now the directions have me go back and find the black connector that goes to the computer. And they want you to take the shell off the back of the black connector. See, this one's a white one with a black connector. This is a black with a black backing. And then they want you to take the shell off the back of it. They want you to peel back the cloth tape as much as possible. It says 300 millimeters. I ain't doing that. Just peel it back. Get it out of your way. And then they want you to pull the bridge off of the white connector off of this. I'm going to use this for example. There's some relief tabs in the side right here. There's four tabs. There's like a little slot there, a little slot there. Just take a flat blade screwdriver, a little pocket screwdriver, and pull up on them. They slide right out of there. And then once they get to the top, their stopping point, you just got to give it a little bit more of a nudge on each corner without being too aggressive. And it literally pulls right out. It looks like this. So if you're looking at it with the dovetail down right here, this dovetail on the bottom down. You're pulling this brown wire. It's the only solid colored brown wire in this entire box. And there's a little release tab right there where my fingernail is. Pull the little release tab back, slide this out. 100 millimeters is about four inches. So somewhere roughly, I don't know, somewhere in here. Call it fucking good right there. Just cut it right there. Save your end, save this end. You need it. So what they want you to do is they want you to get these big butt connectors. They got like teeth inside there. They grab the wire. And they want you to fold the end of the brown wire over that goes to the factory harness because you're now what you're going to do is you're taking these two the purple and the brown the rest of the brown that you cut and you're putting them together in here and crimping them down with like battery terminal the heavier duty style crimpers these and then you're heat shrinking them together let me show you what it looks like it's going to look something like this You put these two together in this connector, and then you, you gotta get you gotta make sure you got ones big enough. I don't know what size these are yet. Parts is still trying to get this recall together completely. But anyway, uh, let's move forward. All right. So what I did now is looking at the face of it again, dovetail down. Always gonna look dovetail down. See the tail down here where my pinky's at. I went one, two, three rows, and then I went one, two, three. See the empty cavity right there by my thumb? That's pin 36. That's this gray wire back here I pulled out of the back side. They want you to cut this about four inches down as well. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this blue and white wire and strip it about an inch back and the wire that's left over from on the, the gray wire, strip it about an inch back and you're gonna do it just like you did that other one and then put them both back together with a small crimp thing with a uh, heat shrink over it. All right, that's the gray wire hooked in with the blue and white wire that goes on the new harness that they supplied. So it's the blue and white tapped in with the gray and then split, put into a butt connector with heat shrink over it. And then kind of comes together just like this. Now we got one more wire we got to take care of. Now you're going to go here. See the dovetail on the bottom again by my pinky right here. You're going to come up here to this second cavity, which I think is 47. And in the back, so you're gonna release a little tab right here. On the back side of it, there's this violet and black wire. You're gonna cut the end off of that and heat shrink this, dead end it. Get rid of the end, heat shrink it, fold it over inside the harness and tape it to the harness. So this is how you deadhead that black and purple wire, just like that. Then I took a piece of cloth tape and I taped it over here inside the harness. All right, so for right now, I went ahead and I plugged my brown wire that I spliced in right here. This one, it's plugged in now. And then I plugged in my gray wire over here. Back in the cavity where it belongs. It snapped in. Now it's time to put this back together and tape as much of this back up factory as possible. We got one more wire we got to hook up, but sit tight. Be patient. All right, so now you're in this little connector here. And all you got to do on this, this end down here towards the harness... All you gotta do is pry open the little wings on each side and it slides right out of there. So if you're looking at the connector like this, 
you just put a pick here pry out put a pick right here pry out and the thing slides right out of there and now we are looking at retainer tab to the right or the sixth pin down ensure that the proper cavity has been identified as there is more than one white and blue wire so as you're looking at the wires as they curl down this is not rocket science so I sh shouldn't have to go back and answer this a thousand times as the wires curl down from the top down and you're looking at this connector the way see these two empty pins in the top right here one two three four five six flip it around to the side look at the sixth cavity down it's a blue and white wire I pull it out of here strip some of the insulation back so I had enough room to work and I'm gonna cut it four inches back and then splice in my other wire with another uh, butt connector in the heat shrink all right here we are let's put together pin is put back in where it goes Now let's put it all back together, tape your, your base and stuff up, put your zip ties around where you cut the zip ties at to get it out of the box, the little zip ties, the connectors that go around, those types of things. Before I start putting everything back together, I went to the next step and it said to remove the relay and the fuse down here. It's the relay, it says remove relay and 25 amp fuse from BJB identified in figure 52, which that's here. And then it says that relay and that fuse, which that relay and that 25 amp fuse is there. And then it's showing putting everything back together is the next step. Now you're gonna go into your data logger here. And you're gonna go into your toolbox through FDRS. And then it says run the, da the data logger. It's gonna ask you what module. You're gonna run PCM, hit continue. So it automatically goes into the PCM data logger. Search PCM, it says. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look for HFC. HFC. So we just go here. You can type in HFC. And then it says here, HFC pound sign. That's what you want. And parameter identification. Okay. Let's scroll down here and see what the next step is. And then you click on it and then look at and select fan control high speed and fan control low speed. So let me find low speed. And then I'm gonna type in LFC for low speed control. Low speed control. It says to test the high speed fan function, turn the engine off, it is just the key is on. Highlight uh, high feed uh, HFC pound sign PCM select command signal. So let's go to continue here, and we're gonna go into the two we pulled up, and then it says to select high speed. Hit the pound sign, and then it says turn off the fan on select so select the button and then select pointing up fan is working and then it says turn the fan off select down okay we're good there and then it says to test low speed do the same thing so we'll go low speed hit the pound sign It says go back to your parameter select, get rid of your high speed fan drop down and only leave low speed fan, hit continue. It's gonna reload your data logger and then you're gonna hit low speed, the command button, and then you're gonna hit up, on, 
and I can hear the low speed fan working. So low speed is working also. Then hit down to shut it off. We're good there. So at this uh, time I'm at the end of the 80 steps and both high speed and low speed are working properly. There's nothing further for me to do here. This recall is complete at this point. So let's recap what we did here. We removed the air box. We removed the battery, the battery tray. We removed the fuse box and inspected it for any burnt up or melted anything. Took it out of the vehicle and when we were pulling it out we disconnected the connectors that's underneath the fuse box and then we pulled the tray out of it and pulled it out of the way. Then we took the new updated harness which the part number for uh, the new harness is if they didn't destroy it before they opened it on me and I'm assuming they probably destroyed it. Let me get you a part number for the harness. Here's a parts list. Aux box wiring assembly. ML1Z13A840A. -A. And then there's your package of whatever. Your splice kits. Another splice kit. Here's your uh, part numbers for anything that's burned up that you have to replace if you find stuff while you're in there. And here is your labor ops for actually replacing the harness and uh, doing what you gotta do to inspect everything and replace it. You get 2.4 hours, 22S36D. It did take me every bit, 2.4 hours to do it the first time, but the next time probably gonna be a little faster each time. But this is one of the ones that you really don't wanna rush too much in. It's up to you and kinda how you wanna handle it. But that's it, that closes out this repair. And then when you mount the box over here in the corner by the air box, up against the wiring harness that goes down underneath the fan follow it along but leave yourself some slack because that yellow and orange pin give yourself enough slack when you go down that radiator and make sure that first pin kind of lines up with the harness that's going up to the first fan which is the only yellow and orange wire that's there because you're going to be pulling that pin out cutting it wrapping it up inside the harness and installing the new pin into that harness it kind of covers everything. Make sure you got sufficient zip ties on the proper crimp connectors and stuff. You may have to obtain that stuff locally. That may not be something that you just have readily available. It's kind of up to you at that point. I hope this helps some of you younger guys out there that haven't done this type of stuff before or even some of the shop foremen or managers in uh, some of these shops that want a little bit more clear guidance on somebody even like myself that may make a little mistake from time to time and then I get to come back and teach you about the type of mistake that I did and this is my bread and butter, electrical work, interior work. Um, any kind of major diagnostics and stuff like this just in this neighborhood of faulty things going on And even I made one or two little mistakes and had to go back and backtrack So this should teach some of you out there and I hope this has benefited you and if you're a shop foreman And you've showed this to one of your guys and it you wanted them to follow this then I appreciate it. Let me know